Hi, welcome to this video. In this video I'm going to go over how to set up an ARC server on Windows, a dedicated ARC server on, an, on a Windows machine through your home internet. I'm going to try to go quickly so uh, as to keep this video short. I'm going to cover a couple different things. I'm going to cover some port forwarding on your router. I'm going to cover how to remote connect to your to your server box and basically the basics of setting up your server on Arc Server Manager so that it actually shows and of course that goes along with the forwarding. You've got to have the forwarding right for it to show. So mainly those three things. There might be a fourth thing in there somewhere but we'll see. Okay so number one let's let's set up a dedicated box. You might have to buy some hardware, you might have an extra computer sitting around. Basically you need a, a window a computer with windows that you can set up uh, near your, somewhere near your router and just wired to your router and you want to get Arc Server Manager set up that on that you want to get a, a remote connection set up on that I use Type BNC Server there are other options Type BNC Server is just rather simple so I'm going to go ahead and connect to it alright so here's here's my box I'm going to show you it, uh, an actual video of it here's the hardware video from my phone there it is Okay, so here's the machine running my ARC server. It's over by my printer. I uh, realize it's a mess and not arranged very well, but it, uh, the important thing is it's like right next to my router, so I can just wire it in easily. And it's over here where no one really messes with stuff. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where my ARC server sits. So just FYI, it is a real machine, not a virtual machine, and it is in my house, and that's why I can connect to it through so easily locally through VNC Viewer. And once you get it booted up, get Windows on it, get a VNC connection, you can actually remove the monitor and just manage it from your other machine. So that's nice. And, uh, and here it is. I'm going to go ahead and full screen it as to not be too distracted. So here's that, that machine that I just showed you, the orange looking one, and type VNC server, which shows as type VNC service and the IP address running on it. So basically you gotta, with type VNC server you gotta set up some passwords and make sure these are checked and then you should be able to connect to it through that IP and port and your password. Then you want to of course launch Arc Server Manager. You might have to go download it, go take care of all that, follow their guides to get it set up. And then once you get in here, you can create a new server, uh, give it a name, password, admin password, and s a server port, and query port, and archon port if you want to. Might as well let everything else pretty much auto configure for the most part, except uh, of course once you go down and, and set all your server settings. You can do that as you like, however you want your server to be. That's up to you and your friends or whoever's going to be playing on it. So the server port has to be forwarded on your router. You want to do this port and the one that follows. So for example, I'll be doing 7779 as well as 7780. You want to forward two ports. Now the reason for that is a little unclear, but it's something about the P2P connections. The server seems to use both ports, and if you don't have them both forwarded, you'll see some weird async er errors and people might disconnect or weird things might happen. Now this is a rather new option they added to use raw sockets, which specifically says you need two ports. But from what I've kind of seen and read, even without this checked, you still want to forward the next one. So it seems to be safe to do that for now. This query port is really important too. Uh, any number around this is fine, except for the 27020 to 30 range. Uh, for example, this range. This is the range not to use. Do not use that range because they're reserved by Steam and the, it just won't show up. People won't be able to see your server. Uh, that's a new thing. In my last video, it was legal to do that, so I had a, a legal port. Well, it was legal then, it was fine then, but now it's not. So you got to use a different one. So 17 works. You can go above 30 and it's fine, like 27031, for example, should be fine. I haven't personally tested it, but according to the documentation I read, it's only the 20 to 30 block in those query ports that's that's uh, used by Steam. Okay, 
So that's enough there. You, now the next thing you want to do is you want to you go to your router that this machine is hooked to and set up all the forwarding so that people can actually find your server. And then to do that, you'll need to go to your router. I guess I've said that a bunch, but this can be tricky because every router is different. You probably want to go to your router, look at the model number, do a little research on how to connect to it. Uh, you can also go to your machine, go to a machine that's already connected to that router, open up command line, uh, start, and then type CMD or command R and type CMD, and type in in, in your command prompt, type in IP config space slash all. You'll get a list of all your little connections. Full screen that. I'm um, connected via Ethernet, so I'm looking at that one. You can see your physical address. You can see your current IP address, and you can see your default gateway. This default gateway is probably how you connect to your router. So that 192.168.0.1, um, which I'm I've connected to here. And just for clarity, I'll redo it. And you should get a login page. Now, if you've never changed this, it'll be your router's default probably. You can look in the manual or look online for your model number and figure out what your defaults are. If you've already changed it, you'll just type in whatever you changed it to. So uh, good luck with that. That can be the trickiest part sometimes is, is just connecting to your router. But I think uh, the general steps I gave you there are pretty universal for 90% of routers. If they're if it doesn't work, you'll just have to read your manual and see how your router is. It might might be different. Some of them are. So once you're inside your router, it's it's probably going it's going to look a little different unless you have the exact same model. I've got a, a TP-Link Archer AC1750, which is not that special of a router, but it works fine. And a couple things you want to take note of. Um, in one of your main pages, you should find a WAN area, which has an IP address. This is your IP address to the world. This is what your internet service provider is giving you. This is what, uh, so you might have Time Warner, Comcast, uh, WOW, some internet service provider. This is what they're providing to you. Now, this can change if, I don't know, you lose service or if they reset things on their end and you have a brief outage. They can, they can change this IP address on you. You can, you can talk to your service provider and ask for a static one that never changes, and that might make your life easier, but it generally costs money and is sometimes only offered to business accounts. So I don't have one. This changes every once in a while on me, but I've been lucky. It only seems to change like once every other month or so, so it hasn't been too much of a pain. You can, as, long as, as long as this is known, you can set up everything. So forwarding. It's really important to forward those ports that we were looking at. Close this, go back here. Uh, so this server server port, query port, and this Archon port. So you want to find the forwarding, and it's probably called virtual servers. Uh, it might be something slightly different, but you basically want to find the port forwarding on your router, and you want to add them. So here they are on mine, and this is the address of my Arc server. Now. Uh, if this address to your this local IP address to your ARC server changes, you're in a world of hurt too because you've got to go in and change all these too and update it to an IP address. The way you can get around that is you can find your DHCP settings and look for something along the lines of address reservation and reserve it. So, for example, that server is called Rushtop. So I'm looking at my client's list through my router. There's the MAC address, there's the IP address. You can go to the address reservation, type in that IP address, reserve it in I or type in that MAC address, reserve the IP address and enable it. And anytime that machine connects, it should get that address and making your life a whole lot easier for forwarding. Uh, don't worry about the other ones. I think one of them's a printer, which can be you probably if you have a printer set up, you might know a little about about this because you often want a static IP on that as well. That way it's always the same to connect to it and it Otherwise, it'll bug out all the time. So this is similar to that. So okay, so I've got the address statically reserved on my router, so it always gets the same one, and I've got those forwarded. Uh, forwarding, forwarding, yeah. I've got those ports forwarded, and like I was saying earlier, you do want to forward two on this, and those are UDP 
and this Archon one is TCP. This, this Archon one's completely optional. You can leave it off if you want, but it, it, you get a few more options for managing your server. You get this Archon connection here, basically, to uh, to do stuff to your server from away, from wherever you are, I believe. So now, so I can connect to my server via this VNC locally and set it up, get it running, and it all works. I'm going to go ahead and show you a video of it working. This is from another internet connection. Here it is. Okay, so I'm on this computer over here. It's just a, uh, another computer in my house. But what's important is it all is on a different internet connection than the host, the Zark server. And it is here, I logged into Steam logged in here. This has ARC installed too. This guy here. And uh, yeah, I have a password. As expected. Okay, and it seems to be doing it. This might take a while. You guys probably know how ARC is. It takes quite a while to load up in general. So... I guess I'll just keep it rolling and cut if it's like super long and boring. Wait, 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 just gotta keep waiting. This is pretty typical of ARC though, in my experience on about any server. You press the buttons and you gosh darn wait and don't touch anything. Don't talk on Discord or you will be disconnected. Don't tab out and look at Reddit or Google stuff. Okay, yeah, here we are. We're on Ragnarok. So the server's up. I've pretty well confirmed that. And welcome back. So it's definitely working. Land of Odin is up to the world. That's good. Now, another thing you might want to do, this is kind of a bonus part, is you might want to connect to your server from the outside world. Say you're at work or out on vacation or something and someone says hey the server's not working okay well I'll give you a few general tips here if you're you want to go to your the machine that's hosting the, your server you want to go to that and you probably want to go to the BIOS so you boot up hit escape F12 whatever it is for your machine F2 uh, you'll have to you might want to Google getting to your BIOS on on your machine if you need help with that. I'm not going to go into it into too much detail. Basically in your BIOS you want to set it so that your hardware powers up when it first receives power. That way if you have a brief power outage when it comes back on your it boots up your machine and then with Arc Server Manager you can there's an option to to boot your server when it uh, it's somewhere in here to boot your server when your machine starts up. So if you have those set, after a powder outage, your server will still come back up. You can also set the auto manage tool so that it auto updates. And, you don't, yeah, and basically if you have all this auto stuff set up, you can kind of just walk away and let it do its thing. But if something should go wrong and it's not up and you're away, you want to be able to remote connect to it to check things out. <laughs> and you can still do that through VNC without changing anything here. Uh, the main thing you need to know is your password and you need to know this WAN outside address. So if you know know those you can connect. I'm going to go ahead and show you that. I've got a laptop with a connection with a separate connection. It will look it'll seem like the outside world to my machine because it's on a it's on a different hosted connection through a different company. So here that is. Here's here's a general connect. How do you connect to tight VNC server from a different internet connection? Um, but before I show you that, you do have to forward that 5900 port or whatever you choose the port to be. I I chose on mine to keep it 5900, but if you change it, it has to be different here too. So you want to forward. That you this basically says anything on this port and coming into this router goes goes to this address, which of course is our server and what we want. And I have that as TCP. It seems to work fine. 
So here's the video of me connecting just to prove it. Roll it. Okay, so this is my laptop. It's on a different connection than my ARC server is entirely. I'm gonna use that outside world port and 5900 and just hit connect and it comes up with asking for my password. So it is hitting it from the outside world. Hey, and there's my ARC server. And if I, if I move around on here, it'll reflect anything I change. I'm connected to it twice. So I don't know if that messes up BNC or not, but it doesn't seem to. So that's how you can manage it from the outside world. I think that covers everything. I really hope this video helps someone. If you have any other questions, let me know. I've recorded this like three times to get it right. So I really hope it helps someone. And uh, leave a like if this helped you or if you were maybe entertained or whatever. And uh, leave me some comments what you think I could have done better, made more clear, if I missed anything, if you have any questions, anything additional you want me to cover. All right, that'll do it. Hope you all have a good day and enjoy playing on your new ARC server.